It's time for the Amari Cooper Show here on 105 Through the Fan. And a good afternoon, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm good. How y'all doing? Doing great, thanks. You enjoy the Mavericks game last night? Yeah, it was fun. Uh, I bet. We're, now, were you there more for to see a game with the Warriors and the Mavs, or or was it to take in the festivities with Dirk? Uh, it was both, actually. It was both. Um, I, to be honest, I didn't know they were doing the Dirk thing. I, well, I would say I got the tickets before I knew they were doing the Dirk thing. So, mm. uh, But when I found out about the Dirk thing, I, I realized um, how cool it was. I grew up watching him play. You know, I used to play a lot of basketball growing up, and I was a big fan of his, so... Yeah. We'll definitely both. Amari, before you uh, jumped on with us, we were doing our WTF moments of the football season, and mine for the Cowboys was Micah Parsons and his obsession with different animals, which I love. Have you gotten involved in those conversations with Trayvon Diggs being an eagle, Micah is a lion, and what animal would you like to be in their group? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We, I mean, I talk about I'm, I, I talk to Micah a lot. Um, so yeah, he he, he, loves, he loves animals. I think he uses it um, as motivation to, to what it, what he has going on with football. Um, the first animal that I can think of, uh, I don't know. I read this book called The Multi Falcon one time. Oh yeah, I thought it was cool. So I would want to be a multi falcon. <laughs> now, is a multi um, can a multi falcon beat a lion in a race? Oh yeah. Falcons are Falcons are really bad. So yeah. What was special about the Maltese Falcon compared to others? Uh, well, to, to be honest, I don't know compared to other Falcons. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. The book wasn't actually about a bird. It was about <laughs> about a statue. Like this, uh, oh, I see. Yeah. It, it, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It was a it, it was a mystery novel. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I just know Falcons are real fast, and and once they once they see their prey, they attack at full speed, up to 200 miles an hour. So the speed aspect, I would say, and then they just obviously fly in. So I don't cool. know. That's the first the first bird I think of other than the eagle, just because I read that book. Are there any animals that you're afraid of? Because if I saw a bird dive bombing at 20 miles an hour, I'd be terrified. 200 just sounds like that's not okay. <laughs> any animals I'm afraid of? Yeah. Uh, nah, I, I can't think of any. Like there's a badger in your backyard. You yeah. walk in the backyard and here comes a badger running at you. How are you feeling? I mean, listen, if I see a, a, a bear in my backyard, I'm not running towards it. But <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not running towards it, but it's like, um, I, don't, I guess I don't like that scared word. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I like it. See, Amari's far more educated as a reader than me. I had to see the movie, Amari, the Mar Maltese Falcon. Uh, Humphrey Bogart was in that movie way back in the day. And you're right. It's an excellent, excellent book and an excellent movie. Hey, but I was going to ask you, okay, you're sitting courtside last night. As a professional athlete, what do you notice when you're, when, like, you're sitting that close to another sport? Because the game, when I used to watch the game from the sidelines, I was amazed how fast you guys play. What is there something like when you're sitting that close to another sport that you kind of take in that you that you like to be a part of? Uh, well, the thing, I, the thing is, I grew up playing more basketball than I, I mean, as much football that I played. Sure. I played more basketball just because, you know, basketball, when you play AAU and stuff, like I was once on five basketball teams at one time. Jeez. So, um, I'm kind of used, I guess I, guess I would say I'm kind of, obviously I didn't play professionally, but I'm kind of used to, um, I'm kind of used to seeing those type of athletes. But one thing that was amazing is just how, how athletic they are in person, right. for real. Like, there was a dunk last night, for yeah, two dunks last night, where me and Eddie just looked at each other, like, it was crazy. <laughs> it was. Um, so, so yeah, I'm amazed with the athleticism. You know, speaking of basketball and football, I was talking earlier about uh, Chris Carter, and and, and uh, he's on NFL Network now, if you don't know, but uh, the former wide receiver said when he would meet new wide receivers that he hadn't met, he would always ask him, did you play basketball or can you play basketball? And he said if the answer was no, he felt like there was a ceiling on how good of a receiver that guy could be. Do you agree with that? To an extent, yeah. Yeah. 
to an extent, yeah, because I would say, um, and I think what he was alluding to, I think what he was alluding to, I'm sorry, I'm driving the car, I don't know, can you hear me good? Yeah, we got you pretty good. Sounded like somebody was revving their engine next to you. You need to get in a race real quick? <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah, none of that. But um, I think what he was alluding to, uh, when I was playing basketball, I think um, basketball is what helped me with high pointing of football. Because you go up for the rebound uh, all the time, and if you don't time the ball right, and if you don't high point that ball, you ain't going to come up with that rebound. Somebody else will get it. So in football, it's the same thing. Like when you have point in a, a deep ball, you don't time it right, and high point it, you give the DB a chance to go up and get it. So I think, I think that's part of what he was talking about. Right on. Appreciate and that. So it, yeah. No, you're good. Hey, if you don't mind me asking, Amaria, there is a lot of talk about it. I think people would love to have your answer on. You know, how do you look at the potential risk of of being in a big crowd and possibly testing positive with the playoffs approaching? Um, well, I just think there's risk all across the board. Like, I, I think, um, you know, even if I stay home, you know, I don't live by myself, you know. So, like, um, I have people who stay with me who have to go out to jobs and stuff like that. So, I just, in another book, to allude to another book, The Tipping Point, right, talks about how, um, you know, how things spread and it, it, it has, like, diseases and stuff and the viruses and stuff in there. Like you can stay at home, but if you stay with somebody else, obviously they go out to their job or drop kids off to school or whatever. And just by them doing that, they're they're coming into contact with probably over a million people just by just because of the person they come into contact with goes into contact with a whole bunch of other people and so forth and so on. So like, I don't know. I just, I just try to when I do go somewhere. I mean, I was pictured not wearing a mask, but I was eating and drinking. Like, mm. um, I don't know how to do that with a mask. So I mean, I, I just think there's risk all across the board. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't feel like anybody is staying home. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. Am I supposed to just sit in the house all day? No, I, I think that's a good answer. You know, there's there's risk everywhere. I definitely agree with that. I wanted to get your perspective on it, how much you're thinking about it. Do you feel an added sense of urgency to to be extra careful, or, or is there talk around the team with that, with the breakout that we've had this week? Uh, well, to be honest, I don't... Yeah, there's, there's an emphasis on that, but I don't, I don't really understand how to be extra careful because, like I said... Uh, just by us going to practice every day, being around each other, we have teammates on, on our team who have kids who take their kids to school who are around hundreds of other kids who are around their parents when they go home, so forth and so on. So I don't feel like we can be safe in, in the environment that we're in. I feel like the only way we can be safe is if no one goes out and everybody is quarantined for an extended amount of time. But the environment that we're in, where we have to go to practice and see each other and we have to be around our families, uh, there's not really any safety in that, in my opinion. Mari, are you... Er- are we wearing you guys out with all the talk about the offense and the problems with the offense and stuff? I mean, it just seems like when you guys go up there and you the press conferences and stuff, you guys are doing your best to answer the questions. But are we overblowing this thing way too much, or is, or is there some legitimate concern there? Uh, with the offense? Yes, sir. Uh, well, I think um, the thing about, like, sports, you're going to get judged more harshly when people realize that you have potential. So I think um, people realize that we have potential to be a really good team when everything is all said and done, and they're judging us based off of that. So I would say based off of that, you know, there's always room for improvement. Amari, do, let me ask you another thing. Do you feel like the organization has your back as a player? Uh, I don't see a reason why they would. Okay, I just yeah. yeah, I just wonder because there's all these different conversations. The owners talking about route running and all this and other. You know, we know you're one of the best, and but he always, I mean, everybody's trying to come up with answers about this offense. Yeah, 
So I just didn't know if you if you felt like, you know, I mean, you've, you've kind of talked about, hey, I, I feel like it can help. You know, do you feel like they have your back in that way that with what you're asking them to do? Like I said early in the week in an interview, like um, you know, there are definitely uh, some opportunities in there um, for me to, to get going this week, and hopefully, I can take advantage of those opportunities. Appreciate your time as always, Amari. Best of luck here against the Eagles. And then we can't wait to talk to you next week with the playoffs coming up, man. So uh, have a great weekend. Give them hell, and we'll be pulling for you. 